Yeah. 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 But something that I've I've really tried to latch onto is uh, simplify, simplifying things, and watching your videos and seeing your artwork, you're definitely just like it seems like you're getting close to mastering simplification, um, especially with acrylic paint, because you I mean you yeah. literally just have to lay it on there, right? And you're you're using mostly flat brushes. Is that mm-hmm. what's up? Or all yep. is it all flat brush? Oh, it's it is. all flat brushes. Yeah, Damn. yeah. Uh, stroke economy. So even the the piece that you have up right now has a lot of little squares and rectangles on right. it. My newer pieces that I've been doing have fewer. So like, how can you simplify into like really organized shapes uh, without you know without losing the the image? you know, or kind of maintaining the integrity of an image while reducing it to sort of the shapes that make it up. And it, yeah, that's been, that's kind of been my goal for a long time. And over time it's gotten, they've gotten a lot tighter. So fewer Mm -hmm. shapes, more decisive shapes, um, you know, generally I think stronger, more decisive colors. So, you know, some of them, even like these from a couple years ago are, really noisy right lots and lots of shapes but when you go to the newest ones they are um you know fewer more dynamic which i think is is more uh more powerful so yeah yeah that's been my challenge is like how do you how do you use fewer marks to tell you know kind of the same story of your image right so how do you make an image but really make every single thing that the paintbrush does important So not to scatter little marks all over the piece, but how, you know, if I'm going to use this pink color around the edges, I I want it to be noticeable, but I don't want it, but not too much, right? Right. It's it's just about feeling it out, like little bits at a time, little kind of growing and building your piece up just piece by piece. Um, And I think that that's one of the things I've gotten better at over time Mm -hmm. is the simplification thing. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that, I mean, your color palettes are really, really on point, too. Um, are you mixing most of these? I see, I think the most saturated mm-hmm. color in this, it looks to me like either a cad red or a pyro red. Is that correct? Or do you even remember? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, so certain, the thing with, with acrylic and, like, gouache, it, oil doesn't have this problem as much, but, like, most liquid mediums, uh when you mix colors, they tend to dull a lot. Mm -hmm. So I will choose a couple of dynamic colors, uh, that I will use out of the tube and then the rest I mix. So like for this really red heavy one, that red is the pure red color. And then that orange that gets a little bit more neutral is mixed, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can usually tell like if there is a like searing green or something, it's probably pretty close to being like an out of tube color. Yeah. But uh, the neutrals and the nuanced colors and sort of the in between colors on my pieces are all mixed. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a complicated way to say that you know that it's it's a balance and that you um, you use the fact that acrylic neutralizes a little when you mix it to sort of bridge the gap between bright dynamic colors you know like you let you let that that super brightness kind of dip a little bit in the interest of popping out the next color so um yeah yeah. so it 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 depends it depends on the piece i do some limited palette stuff too where i'll do an entire painting using only like two colors three colors or something so um yeah it it you know this is one of the things that i like to play with you know Mm -hmm. that i like to try different different avenues try to do stuff differently every time 